In our last art session, we looked at Ellis Lowry and the way that he created the figures and crowds in his paintings. So before we start this session, just to remind ourselves, can you remember the nickname that people gave to the figures that Ellis Lowry drew? So pause the video and have a little think, share it with someone else, and come and join me when you've got your answer and you're ready to share. Well done, they were indeed called matchstick men and matchstick women. So let's have a look at today's session. In this session, we're going to be trying to answer the question of how can I create different colours? And what we're going to be looking at is to explore colour mixing, tints, tones and shades. So this is going to be one of those lessons where you want to get yourself some paints ready. And my recommendation to you is to look at the primary cone colours so your red yellow blue and if you've got some black and white that would be ideal for this activity now on the website you'll find a link with lots of examples of Ellis Lowry's paintings and I want us to take a look at those paintings again but this time I want us to focus on the different colours that Ellis Lowry uses and I want you to create a list of all those different colours here we can see 1928's Going to the Match by Ellis Lowry. What colours can you see on this? Think about how the colours make you feel. Are they exciting colours or vibrant? Are they subdued or muted? What adjectives would you use to describe the colours in a painting such as Going to Work from 1943? Are you spotting any colours that are constantly being used by Ellis Lowry? Would you notice ones that every now and again he decides to just add into his paintings? What impact do they have maybe? So while you're create, looking through these pictures, create that list of all the different colours that you can see. Thinking about how you can precisely label that colour. So think about the vocabulary that you're going to be using. Now, Larry often claimed to use only five paint colours in his paintings. So thinking about the list that you've just created, what do you think these colours were? So which five colours do you think that Larry might have used to create all these different colours in a fight from 1935? Pause the video, have a little think. Think about what you've written on your list that could help you. Think about things that maybe you've looked at in the past can support you on this then come and join me when you're ready so Larry often claimed that he only used five paint colors in his paintings and these are the five that you can see that he was pointing to so we've got vermilion which is sort of a red color Prussian blue which is sort of a subdued blue color yellow ochre flake white and ivory black. So why do you think he chose these colours? And what do you notice about them? Think about the adjectives maybe you used earlier on when you were trying to decide, describe what these colours were like, whether they were exciting or vibrant, subdued or muted. So these five colours are quite subdued shades and Basically, they're slightly subdued versions of the normal colours that we can think of. So, vermilion, Prussian blue, yellow ochre, flake white, ivory black. They fancy names for primarily colours we've used in the past. So, we've got red, blue and yellow and, of course, the white and the black. These were basically the five colours that Larry was using to create all his paintings. Now, do you notice anything special about these three colours you can see on your screen? The red, blue and yellow. These colours are called the primary colours and by using these you can mix them together in different amounts in different ways to create all the other colours. So if we chose two of these colours and we mixed them together we'd actually made a, make a third colour which isn't in our set. So can you think of any two colours that you could mix here and what colour they would create for us? So pause the video, have a little think. I think if we, for example, put the red and blue together, what colour would you create? If we put the blue and yellow together, or the yellow and red, 
So think about how many different colours you can think of that you can create just using these three colours. So you can make a, a huge variety of colours by choosing to add a little or a lot of each colour. So we can see that we've got our idea of adding red and blue together to make purple, yellow and red to make orange, and blue and yellow to make green. Now think about that. How do you think you could mix paints, for example, to make a light green? So pause the video and I want you to think about how you could make a light green rather than a darker green. So already we've made, added our blue and yellow together to make green. And to make a lighter version of a colour, we simply add white. And the more white you add, the lighter the colour will be. When we add white to a colour, we call this a tint. So we can see that we started with green, and now we have a green tint that's happening. So we can see the very far left, we've got quite a lot of green and a little white. And then we increase the amount of white as we move to the right. Or we could have decreased the amount of green to make those lighter shapes. So now we've explored how to make a light green tint. How do you think we'd go about making a dark green colour? So pause the video and have a little think. How would you go about making a dark green colour? Here we can see that we've added black to our colour and this is creating a shade. So often you only need a small amount of black paint to make the shade of your chosen colour because too much black and the black becomes far too powerful and as we can see on the colour on the very far right potentially will look more black than the colour that you want. So so far we've seen the idea that if I add two colours together, two primary colours, I just make another colour. If I decide to add some white to it, I make a tint, and if I add some black to it, I make a shade. However, what do you think is going to happen if we added both white and black to a colour? Now if you add black and white to a colour, you produce a tone, and this means it's a colour that's far more realistic, so far more like the version of colours we see in real life. Just having a primary colour, if you think sort of, if we just take that red, it doesn't really look like the red as we see. But when you start thinking about that idea of adding white to make the tint, adding black to make the shade, if you start adding white and black together to make a tone, that red starts to become more like the things that you would see. Where you can start making it a red, for example, that might be a strawberry, or a red that might be a cherry, or a red that might be a puddle of blood on the floor. Now, Lowry uses a lot of tones in his paintings. So if we look back at an image like coming from the mill from 1930, you can see just how many tones that he's created. Remember, he's saying he's only used five colours for this. He's only used his red, his blue, and his yellow. Or, in his case, the vermilion Prussian blue yellow ochre, those more subdued or duller colours. And then he's added his white and his black, his flake white, his ivory black. And this has allowed him to make some different tints, some different shades, and then of course those tones. And if we look at an image like this, we can see there's definitely far more than five colours that he's created, despite the fact he's only used five different coloured paints. So before we go off to do our independent activity and start looking at some different tints, shades and tones, Let's see if we can identify what's going to happen if I mix some different colours together. So if I added these two colours together, if I mixed these two colours, what do you think would happen? How would you describe the resulting colour? Would it be a tone, a tint, or a shade? Think about what I'm adding to that colour. Think about whether it's white, black, or black and white to help you make that decision of whether it's a tone, a tint, or a shade. And a nice easy way of checking this, you can get your paint and mix this colour yourself. So in this instance, if I add 
red and white together, I'm going to get a pink. And this is going to be a tint. So it's a tint of red when I make pink. Because our base colour is that red. And all I've done is I've lightened it. What about if I mix these two colours together? How would you describe the resulting colour? Would this be a tone, a tint or a shade? So again, if you want to, you could pause the video, you can go and get those paints so you could actually practice making this colour. Or alternatively, just have a little ponder, and then I will go through the answer in a few moments. So by adding some black to the blue, notice the small circle for the black in this case, I'm going to create myself a darker blue, and this is a shade. So I'm making a different shade of that original blue. And then for our final one before we start our independent activity, what's going to happen if we mix these colours together? And how would I describe this resulting colour? Would it be a tone, a tint, or a shade? And again, if you've got some paints to hand, you can give this a go. Or alternatively, wait a few moments and we'll go through the answer. Now on this one I've started with my orange which I've made from two primary colours and then I've mixed it with white and black which has created a grey colour and this is going to give me a muted colour, this is going to give me more subdued, not so lively and vibrant as the orange was and this is a tone so by putting the white and the black to turn into that grey this is where you're going to be able to change that colour into a tone and this is definitely what we see when we look at L.S. Lowry's paintings. We see those subdued colours and tones that he sees when he's walking around these northern towns and cities. So now we've used L.S. Lowry's paintings to help us explore colour mixing, where we've been thinking about different tints, tones and shades that can be created. So this idea of using those primary colours of our red, blue and yellow, and then deciding to add white or black, or sometimes both, to create those different tones that Ellis Lowry works with. Now it's our turn to do it ourselves. So this is where you're going to grab your paints and you're going to mix the colours to try and match the ones in the boxes. So I want you to see how well you can actually match up these colours. And we've got our little people, our little matchstick men and women, to give you some tips and advice to see how well you do. So this one I'm really looking forward to seeing how you get on and seeing how accurate you can make them. Now, don't be afraid if it takes you more than one go. Keep adding those different versions of those colours because when you're creating your own paintings later on, you might decide you want a specific tint, a specific tone, a specific shade that you've created. And by putting them on this piece of paper, you'll be able to go back to it and see how you created that tone, that shade, that tint. So good luck and I look forward to seeing your colour mixing.